we are going to talk hurling. Dahi Regan is on the line. Evening, Dahi. Evening, Nate. How are you, sir? Very well. And Good. also, Jeremy Gizzy Ling is with us in studio. How are you? Nathan. Beard Dahi. looking magnificent Good. as ever. You? Yeah, yeah. It's. Uh... Do, you con- do you condition that beard? I, I, do I condition it? Do you condition that beard? As in, like. Do you use a conditioner, conditioner on your beard? No. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever's in the question before. I knew the answer to that question before I even asked. Yeah, yeah. So uh, last week was a uh, sort of uh, chaos in the hurling world because of the weather. We ended up with a load of games called off, which means that the calendar is sort of upside down now. The club players might end up being affected. The finals have been pushed back a week. We've won quarterfinal this week, and we've some league games still to go. Uh, we've leash against Limerick on Saturday evening at seven o'clock. We might start on that actually, Gizzy. And like Leash going into this game against the All Ireland champions Limerick, all right, who were beaten last time out, but have so far looked to be absolutely flying, have wintered very well. It feels as though this game can't do Leash any good. Or can it? Yeah, I suppose the most ideal thing is that there has been a defeat and a draw. Maybe it took the wind a little bit of Limerick sales. Mm. I, if, where where are they at? I suppose they want to find that out. The fact that they haven't performed really very well in in one B is is kind of t- tells its own own tale anyway. So I don't maybe Eddie knows exactly where they are at anyway. If Limerick, if if Limerick bring something very very strong, yeah, I'd say that it would it, it can be detrimental. Like at times you do get. You get just too big. A, you just get too big a hit. Like you get too mm. big a hammer, and to say, well, m- maybe if I'm that far off, if I see where the standard needs to be at, um, and where the standard is actually at, and and you compare yourself to that, which is unavoidable when you're playing against, you know, when you're playing against that opposition, and you see how far behind you are, that can be that can be totally and utterly demoralising. But I think with Eddie uh, Brennan at the helm, I think they definitely have some. Uh, he'll have a good consideration of the the long term nature of it and the uh, need to develop and what you just what you can learn if you t- if you took that attitude going out against Limerick now like look, just what can you learn like accept everything that happens mm. what you can learn and just stay with that and no don't be too attached to what the outcome is don't be too attached to getting bet by even if it's bet by twenty points what did you learn like if you just take that out of it I think that's the only possibility f- for them and we on the outside will have an opinion about what that means for Leash Harling and where they're at and everything else but they're not in the relegation battle they're in a quarter final. And I think that's only a good thing, you know. Yeah, is that how you look at this, Dahi? That this week is almost an internal battle for Eddie Brennan to try and get some level of performance and ask questions of players that they're getting this huge opportunity against the All Ireland champions, but to also not panic and make sure that like, the last thing you want is to suffer an almighty beating and you've lads deciding here I'm going to take the summer off and go to America. <laughs> to be honest with you, Nathan, I hope the leash hurlers aren't listening to you because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen, let, let's let's look. Listen, I, I'm training under 15 hurling team in Offaly. We've had one challenge game. I looked for the best team we could get. We lost by about eight to ten goals, and I was so buoyant after the game. I've seen so much in these young fellas, and every game we're looking for, we're looking for teams higher level. We're looking mm. for A teams. We be we be Group B, because to look at these fellas and watch them learn and watch them improve at every single training session, I have no interest in going out and playing against teams at at what's supposed to be our own level. None, nor will I. I don't care how many heightens we take, but these will all come good in time. That's, that's what you do. Uh, let, let me give you an example. I was coming down from Sligo this evening, and a friend of mine rang me from Belfast with the dates for the Joe McDonough Cup. And I know that we're in the Joe McDonough Cup in Offaly. And he said to me, oh, we're, we're, we're down on such a date in May, and, you know, we're, Antrim are playing. And I'm thinking, you're not in the same league. And he said, we're playing you in the Joe McDonough. And it was like a lightning bolt. It was, my God, we are in the Joe McDonough Cup. And we're here talking about Leash playing the All-Ireland Champions and worrying for them. Eddie Brennan will embrace this, and the Leash players will embrace this, and they're absolutely dead right. And it's not that Limerick are supermen, or they're far better hurlers. From a skill set point of view, most of the Leash players will have the same skill set as Limerick will. But what they'll have is, from a conditioning point of view, they'll be quite a bit ahead. From a confidence point of view, they'll be light years ahead. And that confidence, and the difference in confidence, makes up a massive discrepancy between both sides and where they're at. Confidence mm. is huge. So actually, this is the best ever occasion for Leash to go out and play Limerick. And for guys to be told to go out and express themselves and not hurl, not be inhibited in the way they're hurling. And inhibited means standing two yards off as a defender of your man because I'm terrified if I hurl up in front of him, he gets it, I miss it, he's going to be around me. 
This is a day to throw the shackles off. This is a day to show how good you are. This is a day to embrace the challenge of playing the All-Ireland champions. And each individual should look forward to the battle that he's going to face with a big name with an All-Ireland medal in his pocket. These are great. They look at Ross Common footballers last week. You know, this nonsense we're listening to about Dublin going to win every All-Ireland for the next 10 years because they're so much better and they have so much more money. This rubbish that, that's been trotted out daily. This is a great day for Leash. They may very well take a beating, but it's what they learn from it. There'll be better people and I'd rather be where, where, where they're at this weekend than us facing into a, a relegation battle. So, you know, it's an Irish thing. Let's set our standards up high. Set our goals high. Set our standards high and try and attain them every time we go up. Rather than take the, you know, the armchair ride and, mm. oh, God, we're better off if playing someone below us and a couple of good wins. It's like uh, Brian Carroll is, 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 was a brilliant athlete hurler and I massive time for Brian Carroll. But I, I totally disagree where he said maybe we're better to get relegated. We're, we're not better to get relegated. We need to be at very least in the league we're at and to aim to get up to the higher levels, to be playing players who play with a lot of confidence. They're not supermen. They're not ten times better players. They're better in some aspects, in their in, in, in their physical and their ability and their confidence levels, that's a hell of a lot of a, a difference between teams now, to be honest with you. Uh, Dahi's dead right there when he's... Like, I've been very harsh here on Leash because mm. Division 1B is a, a very good league for learning because they got their tough challenges and they put it right up to Galway and even last week in horrible, ridiculous conditions, you know, they ran Dublin very close and if Dublin or Galway were going up against Limerick, we certainly wouldn't expect it to be one-sided and also they went up against Carlo and Offaly teams of a level where they would feel that they're quite similar and they got went and got their draw with Carlo and they got their victory over Offaly that actually Eddie Brennan will have learned a huge amount. Do, would you go along with, with Dahi there that actually this is a good opportunity for these Leash players to properly test themselves? I'd say they'd be happier after listening to Dahi than they were after listening <laughs> to you anyway, and there'd be a lot more hopeful. I, I'd, I'd um, imagine. And, and, and there's a degree of, I, I get what Dahi is saying, absolutely, and it's a very, it's an inspirational mm. thing, it's an inspirational mindset, like, and I can feel it alive in me as he's saying it, because it's the way, it's not, it's, that's not, that's not hurling, like, that's everything, it's everything you do, like, it's what, what are you taking from it? Are you... Are you getting lost in the the results of it, you know, and in, in uh, as Dahi is talking about, like, because in the results of it, you're really into what the team's perception of itself is, and then what the, that's, that breaks down into individual lots of what the players think of themselves, and that's, you're in the kind of, the ego version of what their team is, what their style is, what they're doing right, and what they're doing wrong, and everything else, and you become attached to that, and then that begins to own you, and it curtails your performance, it curtails your freedom, it curtails, your, your, it curtails the enjoyment of, of what you're doing. Mm. Again, across the board and everything you do in life, not just in the hurling field. So I, you couldn't but agree with the philosophy of it. I, I, there is part of me that still thinks I, I play the game to enjoy the experience of it, and I didn't. There's not many days. I, I remember some days definitely, but very few compared to the days that we won. And when I came off the field and we had won and played well and had won and had emptied ourselves and had won and and uh, just were unified in everything that we did and and the game just flowed really well. There's a great value in that. There's a great value value in winning too. Like, and if you're going out and getting an absolute hammering, it it, it it does it does knock something. But it only is a measure of how attached you are to that more egoic version of what the team is. In just just as I as I see it, it's like, yeah, it, there has to be a measurement. There has to be you know, it, it's cups and it's trophies and it's winning games mm. and it is all of that. But at this stage of where Eddie Brennan's development is, I think yeah, you welcome the All Ireland yeah. champions. You welcome that. You welcome the, the the test of it. And there's a balance in what you're saying as well. Of listening for your leash player, you're relishing the opportunity to go up against the Kyle Hayes or against mm. the Keane Lynch and to be on the pitches, same pitch as these superstars of the game. Or if you're not rel if you're not relishing it, mm. it's like Dahi's point there with Brian Carroll. Well, you know that's Dahi's opinion that he's not right, and part of me is saying, yeah, well, that is Brian Carroll saying this is where we're at. This is where we're at. This is the truth of where we're at, not where we would like to be. This is where we're at. Now, that's a, a different point in some respects, but it's like, yeah, no, I, I think that they'll. It's a positive, yeah. It's a positive. Dahi, on what you're talking about there, you know, you want to be tested at the highest level all the time and, and learn what you can from those occasions, even when you're coaching underage teams. When you were playing, did you ever enjoy a game that you lost? Or is that a ridiculous question? No. Abs abs uh, um, well, 
I, I, what I, ever have enjoyed a game, I, I've never enjoyed the result, of course, not the result. But what I look back and, and look at games that I would have been involved in were that, that were absolutely titanic tussles that we came out on the wrong end of. Yes, an under-21 All-Ireland final against Tipperary in 1989 in front of 40,000 in Port Leash. An absolutely epic 4-12 to 3-14 we were on the end of in an absolute classic. You knew what you were in, and, and, and Gizzy's been in them, and we've all been in them. And it's like someone said to me today, you know, what, what games did you play in that you changed the result? Not one. Not single one game, because that's too glib to say what one would you have changed, the type of games you're talking about. I might have changed some of my preparations and had them better to maybe have influenced the game, but to say I would have changed that result, that's a nonsense, mm-hmm. to be honest. But going back to the point Giz is making, let, let's take his own county as a case in point. Not so long ago, Wexford were at the same level as we were, or we were at the same level as Wexford were. Decent, reasonable, competitive at times. You look at where Wexford are now. Now, I've been very critical of Davy's strategies over the years, and I've been critical of Davy in certain incidents that took place in games. But would Wexford be where they are without that man that's down there now? I don't believe so, because he's an absolute inspiration, and that's a fact. And wherever he goes, he brings in professionalism that these group of players may not have seen before. Now, I do think he, the fact that there's a lot of backing behind him helps him, and that's that's to be welcomed. I'm not knocking it. It's a good thing. But he is a bunch of Wexford players that actually now are not being judged on the National League. People are looking at them as how genuine contenders are Wexford for a Leinster crown and possibilities for an All-Ireland. Not as far away as many people think or everybody thinks. I just think he needs to tailor the setup. And I know Eamon Cleary constantly, the great Eamon Cleary from Wexford, mm. constantly says we have great hurlers. We just need to be a little bit more bold in how we play, and I've always agreed with that. But look where Wexford are now. A lot of that is down to belief that the players have listened and they've absorbed what this man has told them. But they ultimately are the ones privately that are doing the work, that are taking in this self-belief and this this self-confidence that how often do we see Kilkenny going to Wexford Park or Wexford going to Nolan Park and people saying, I fancy Wexford that, because I do. I fancied them, I fancied them last year, and I fancied them this weekend again. And that's a sea change. And that's occurred in Wexford in the last two to three years since Davy Fitzgerald has come down. And they're no whipping boys for anybody now, Wexford. And, like, they arguably could have and should have beaten Limerick. Before Davy Fitzgerald come down, would, would, would Wexford have welcomed the All-Ireland champions down and been absolutely confident of beating them? So it can be done. The point I'm making, it can be done. It's embryonic stages for Leash. But Wexford are a case in point that it can be done, that you can compete with the top four or five teams in this country and every player in Wexford believe in on a given day, we'll beat them with no fear of them. There's nothing that can't be achieved. That, that's the point is, I think, uh, you know, I think you get it, I'm trying to make. I do, yeah. I'm like, now, now I'm like, I'm up for Wexford now. Like, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, off, I'm off my seat here now. Like, it's great, Dahi. It's great to hear the, the enthusiasm about, well, about, about, about Wexford. It, no, it is. is it? It, it is. It for sure is. I suppose you don't... Sometimes, even though I know it's a male and fubble, like, I know it's in the, the public domain and people talk about improvements and everything else, but it, it still is a great thing to kind of realise, like, to take stock of where, of, of, of where you're at at certain times and mm. say, well... You do have to remember, and and it's not just as it's not just like looking back as though it happened four or five years ago. This thing that Dahi's talking about, where if the All Ireland champions came to Wexford Park, you would be fearing it in in a way, you know, and and it like it 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 happened. It was the way. It was the it was the way of it, and that translated into into everything, into the energy that they showed on the field in every little small thing that they did. And that's not there now. There is this. There's this competitiveness, and I and I feel it's funny. Like as a, as a past player with them, there's a degree of envy that I feel that mm. we played when, when when we played from '05 to or oh, twelve to twelve. We'll say after 2004 when things were going well. '05 not so bad. '07 wasn't so bad either. We had a couple of good results. But other than that, Wexford played in a very contained manner, particularly mm. when we played against Kilkenny. I think they just drove so much out of us in, in some of those big beatings. You mean a, an emotionally contained manner rather than a tactically yeah, contained manner? Yeah, 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 that's it. And I think that, that, that I find, I, sometimes I felt like those fellas were out on their feet after 10 minutes and they'd been training all year. So how could that be possible? Whereas now they're competitive in every single ball. They're, con- they're controlled, they're touched, their movement, their fitness, stamina, all of that stuff. They're just up there. Now I do think Davey recognises that there is still something that's 
not quite there's mm. something they're not quite letting loose like and I do I think it comes down to a slight paradox in 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 in, in probably what Dahi's saying as well is that we have this system of, and style of playing mm. and I think Kevin Foley has slotted into that sweeper system really well they, they don't want to call it a sweeper system but it, to me it's, he, that's the position he's occupying um, they're playing off the shoulder a little bit more effectively than they were a little bit closer a little bit faster Th- those things are working well but if you want to let let that that last piece out I remember reading a, a book, and I, I don't know the name of it, but it was, it was Eddie Kerr talking in the 70s about, he reckons that they lost at least five or six times to Wexford on the basis of the Wexford rebel songs and music about uh, 1798 and the Wexford spirit and the fighting spirit and stuff. And he written, this is written in the book, and, I, and I, when I read it, I knew exactly what he was talking about. And sometimes I think that in the very contained, very controlled, very structured version of how hurling is developing, that that spirit sometimes doesn't get a chance to come out and that Wexford spirit when mm. it comes to hurling, when you've got a, a group of players who are m- probably more talented than we've had for mm. a good while as well, when you have that, you get all of the technical stuff right and the tactics and everything else and that's lovely, but there also has to be this other thing. We saw, like I, I would argue, I don't see a whole lot of it, but I saw Twitter alight with it today on Manchester United last night and the whole feeling around it is, Solskjaer has tapped into this this spirit of the Manchester United club, and you get that feeling from every, from the way they're being spoken about. And I think that's the that's the final stage. If Wexford are going to talk, if, if what he's saying is true, um, or if it's going to be accurate, where Wexford win a Leinster Championship or challenge for an All Ireland, I think they have to find what that is, and that's not as easy. Yeah, Dahi, that that little final one percent that maybe Wexford need is. Is there something tactical that Davy can do to give the players that little bit more freedom? Well, I think it's a very interesting question. I, I do believe so, yeah. And and where it comes from is this. I, I went to see Wexford and Clare down in Porca Keeve last year, mm. and I thought Wexford were very suffocated in the hurling. Uh, they were very, very defensive. At times, I actually took a photograph, a couple of photographs from the stand, whereby one Wexford forward inside the 60-yard line. Now, all the tactics in the world, when you come up against it, the very, very good sides, you, you can't be that systematic in the game of hurling that everything is going to be done correctly the way he'd like it done. The off the shoulder, the speed, the laying off, the running off the shoulder, the ball into the space, the angle ball, the first touch having to be right, and the accuracy at the angles they're shooting from to be up around 80, 85%. That's not going to happen against brilliant defences. I've said this before that I believe within that Wexford group of players, he, he needs to show a little bit more belief in them that they have the capability, but he's very aligned to the way he plays. Now, I missed a lot of the Clare game against Wexford in the league because I was I was at the National Hurling League game here in town and said to watch a bit of the football. And I was following it on the app and I said, Clare, we're so far ahead. I got in and I caught then the delayed showing. I caught the last 15 minutes. And the last 15 minutes... I said, this can't be what I was looking at on the app because I just thought Wexford were phenomenal. They obviously were pretty poor before that and Clare had hurled well. But in the last 15 minutes, I thought the power and pace and movement of Wexford was phenomenal. But that's a snapshot of that whole game, that 15 minutes. So it's a case of encapsulating that 15 minutes where they threw the shackles off and they were so far behind. So it's within them to play like that. So I think he does need to, to throw the shackles off a small little bit and keep more forwards or play, play one sweep or play one defender. But last year, you know, when they played Clare in that, that, that game, it was like, it wasn't even marginal. There was such a golf and class that day. But, but I think he's learning and I think they will be better this year. To touch briefly on Gizzy's point, I think he hits a very important point. For teams to continue to be successful at the highest level, Different type of systems and different styles of play are all very important, but ultimately what sustains you is the culture. The culture of winning, the culture of being a Kilkenny player, the culture of being... Wexford, to me, when I was playing Hurling, Wexford and Limerick were the two hardest teams I played against. They weren't the best teams. They weren't the best teams. We beat Limerick in an All-Ireland and we beat Wexford in a couple of Leinsters. Invariably, we came up against Kilkenny probably a lot more. But throughout my career, the hardest teams I ever played against were Limerick and Wexford. And at those given times, they weren't the best. But you hated playing against them because they never knew when they were beaten. They were tough physical teams to play. Mm. Arguably, I would have taken more belts and more broken Mm. fingers against those two teams than against anybody else. And I really didn't like playing against them. And a lot of my colleagues were the same as well. You knew what you were going to get when you played against them. When you then kind of infuse tactics and systems into it, Wexford probably 
have lost a little bit of that kind of knew which we're going to get Griffin getting them off the bus. But there's a balance. There's a balance. And I think the way it is nowadays, you trust players to bring that belief and dynamism onto the pitch himself. That the days of hammering tables and fellas going out and eating thorny wire and sustaining them for 70 minutes is gone. That the system and the structure is what you concentrate on. But you must bring this, you must bring this passion and you yeah. must sustain this passion. And that comes from your culture. The culture of your county, which I do think Wexford have, and I do think they have a good marriage of it now, to be honest with you, but never underestimate an individual that you're marking with this undying belief in what he's going to do on that given day. And that's why I'm a, I'm a firm believer and always will be. There's no player that can't be broken on a given day, which is why teams should never be without hope. It's when you come up against great sides like Kilkenny had, where along with the brilliant players they had, Kilkenny had so many players that they just wouldn't be broken. They yeah. just, with, with, with the mentality, you know, they just had it in every single way, which is what made them stand out from everybody else. But not every team has what Kilkenny had. No, that's for sure. I want to talk to you very briefly about Tipperary. Uh, the Hurling Show was on today, as always, uh, with Shane Stapleton. You can check it out on our social channels, com right now. Kieran Carey was with them today, and he was talking about Tipperary and the addition of Eamon O'Shea to the backroom staff. Uh, I, did you pose that question to your two awfully friends as well? You did. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come here. Are you waiting for Kieran to spice it up a small little bit? Yeah, yeah. Mate, to be fair. <laughs> Listen, the bottom line here is you have to call it as you see it. If I was Tommy Dunn, I'd be definitely scratching my head and saying, right, what's going on here? But it isn't the ideal scenario. And I suppose Owen Kelly's name would have been branded, branded for a, a good number of weeks as well before he actually put his management team in. So... It, it, it doesn't sit right to be doing that at this time of the year. So only time will tell if there's going to be consequences to that move or not. No, but to be fair, Liam Sheedy, you know, he's a very professional guy and he'll, uh, he'll gloss over that and he'll manage his own setup. But there's certain areas that he won't be able to manage. But only time will tell, really. Yeah, that's Kieran Carey there talking on the Hurling Show earlier today about Eamon O'Shea returning to the Tipperary backroom team. Because this, I think, caught most people by surprise, considering Eamon O'Shea's success as a Tipperary manager to return in a role behind the scenes. And you don't really, initially, I would have just thought the more brain power you can have, the better for a county. You don't really think of the behind the scenes dynamic and coaches and their own personal aspiration, how somebody's nose might be out of joint. And we know how fragile an atmosphere within a squad is. Do you think this could be a potential issue down in Tip? Well, I mean, the fragility of the squad and the fragility of the atmosphere will, I mean, that's going to dictate how they perform. And if there is a fragility in Tommy Dunn or in Dara Egan or Carbro Karen or whoever is, is, is in there, mm. if they have a fragility and if they're going to take this on as, as, as some kind of insult, right. I, think, I think Tipperary aren't going to go very far. I mean, Eamon O'Shea, as you said it yourself, like he... I think he's displaying as he does, and it's not a display of it. It's just it's just who the man is, as as, as well as as well as I can um, judge him from how well I know him. It's like he will go in in, in as a as a backroom member, and he will play whatever role that needs to be played because the the man, as as far as I can work out in the GA, is, is the the least attached to his ego or any version right. of it that I've ever met. Like he just. That's just not a factor. It's like, can I assist something here? And he'll have had that conversation with Liam Sheedy, and no doubt with the lads. And I'd, and he'd have no problem sitting down in front of him and say, okay, like, tell me what. And if you feel that there is, if you feel there's just like, like, let's work through that now. Let's take it on. It's not going to be something that's left off in the background. It's not how Eamon O'Shea works. It's not who he is. It's not the type of person he is. I think he's only. I think it's only a positive thing for Tipperary. Um, I think he's 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 just adding more to it. And if there is a slight anywhere, that's where the weakness is, not an Eamon O'Shea coming in. Yeah, I guess it's one of those situations, Dahi, that as the summer goes on and results go one way or the other, this will be seen as a, a master stroke or a moment of panic. I think that's a fair comment, to be honest with you. And I'd ask the question, if Tippett won the first four league games, would he have called for him? Um, I, I think it's a really interesting move by... Liam Sheedy, I mean, I like like probably everybody else when he took the job went, that's that's the exact fit. And from a I suppose a management point of view and a structures point of view, if you look at the appointment of the team sponsors and the close relationship that Liam has there, and from a logistics point of view, I suppose the influence that the team sponsors are gonna have 
f- from a logistics point of view and a support network they're going to provide for them, that looked all very positive that you're saying, well, okay, Tip are going to want for absolutely nothing this year. And if you remember back three years ago and the beating they gave Kilkenny, you're saying, well, okay, we know there's good players there. Mm. I, I think Tipperary have very good players. I think Tipperary individually are very, very good. But I don't think if you look at where Wexford are, I think from a strategic point of view, I think Wexford are light years ahead of Tipperary, to be honest with you. But really? I think Tipperary are very much in a time war, and I'm not necessarily disagreeing with them, because I'll judge Tipperary in the summer, and I still think they'll be a big factor. But I think from a strategic point of view, Wex- the likes of Wexford and Limerick are far better set up, to be honest with you. I think there's plan A's, I think there's certainly with Limerick, plan B as well. Um, with Tipperary, it seems to be we have very, very talented forwards, individuals, bubbles, the likes of those guys. Very, 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 very talented players. Shamey Callanan, Noel McGrath, the young fella from Nina that's in there as well, coming off at 21, looks a really, really good player. And I've watched highlights, if not live, of all the games they've played this year. And individually, one-on-one, they're very, very good stickmen. But what I don't see is, I don't see a lot of support play in the forwards, to be honest with you. They're really tight defenders when they're blocking an avenue to goals. There, there's not the same movement that you get from the likes of Limerick forwards or Wexford forwards, mm. to be honest with you. Now, faster ground, faster ground and quicker ball, which is going to kind of take out half back lines. That's where I see Tip coming into it. I don't think he's going to panic too soon. I don't think he likes the fact that we lost the last couple of games. You know, mm. close games, the same as last year in the championship. A grain of rice, and they could have been contenders or in an All Ireland semi final last year, but got pipped in games in Munster, and all of a sudden they're dumped out of it. So, Liam is smart enough to know that yes, we've good players, but we have no divine right here. There are teams out there who can bring Tipperary down on, on, on a day, and on two days and three days, and you're gone out of it again. So, I think it smacks a little bit, a little bit, I would say, of desperation, a little bit, because I don't believe he'd have brought Eamon in. And now maybe this was orchestrated and preordained from months, months earlier, maybe. Yeah. But I suspect, I suspect if... But it that's, is that not the point, today, Dahi? Is, is the point not that, like you're saying, the, the one thing you mentioned in particular about their play, and it is noticeable, and I noticed it in Mexico Park um, a couple of weeks ago, is the support play, that lack of support play, whereas yeah. those, that systematic structure that the likes of Wexford have employed, they are far more adept at that at this stage of the year. But um, reading... Lark Harbert during the week, I mean, he was just, he was talking about Eamon O'Shea and that's the one thing that he mentioned. He said, like, to, to develop the awareness of where the players are around you all of the time. And I think it was um, Noel, maybe Noel McGrath, who the, the, the slipped Callan through for the pass. And he was saying that was, that was Eamon O'Shea's hallmark like he that was, that came from that I think 2016 the final um, he, he just he, everything that from 2010 on like everything that he did was about support play was about opening up your awareness of what's going on around you so Liam Sheedy sees okay this is where we're this is where we're mm. weak this is not working for us we bring somebody in who's very good at it I, I mean you, attaching some of the bigger stories to it sometimes maybe well, derails it's what's it's actually it's happening in the camp it's, it's like this what we need that is Eamon O'Shea was there and they didn't win an All-Ireland final when he was manager Mm. Liam Sheedy won one with an extraordinarily talented bunch of players. So now we're looking at a scenario whereby you have a former Tipperary forward talking about, you know, the pattern's been woven now or, or that will be woven or down to Eamon O'Shea. Well, then have Tipperary erred in bringing Liam back. Is it an acknowledgement that he brings a lot of attributes and he can bring a backroom staff and he can bring big business in behind Tipperary? But from a coaching point of view, to get the best out of a sextet of talented forwards, we need to revert back to Eamon because, you know, Liam doesn't give that. Is there a suggestion in what you're saying then that, from a coaching point of view, Liam either is incapable of providing a functioning forward line who can devastate with movement and offloading and that Eamon can? And the point I'd make about that is, when Eamon was manager, that didn't happen. Yeah, I think it's something we're going to have to come back to as the summer rolls on. Dahi, great stuff as always. Cheers, guys. Have a good evening. And Gizzy, thank you for joining us in studio. Yeah, good to be back in. Thanks for having me. We'll talk to you again soon. Yeah.